and Josh is going to be going up against someone we've seen on the cast already, which is Tarvidi, which is very exciting. I believe they were playing a Thunder list prior. We watched Thunder? Tarvidi okay. go uh, on Thunder against Stellar Kristoff. Yeah, we are here with our casters for our first round of top eight, as we have Bean going off against Tarvidi. Both casters have drawn their opening hand of five. It looks yeah, like it our casters are grabbing their hands. Go ahead and look at them and resolve their mulligan. It's it's really something to behold here too, and kind of just the way that Alashals goes. Josh is going to expend to draw, it looks like, and pass. And pass back to Tarvidi, who's gonna be playing an Astro Rabbit in attack position here. I mean, it looks like this maybe this is the competitive advantage. You know, Josh coming in here, now I know this Mount Olympus here is magnetized <laughs> to this fridge. But maybe that's the competitive edge, is Josh is playing on a horizontal board? There's no way. Uh, Josh electing to expend a draw and pass there might work out here as there's no defensive to stop oh. this viscerous Ooh. immediate aggression coming down from Bean Soldier. This is going to be uh, backed up by a counter rune, and that's going to be insane advantage from the horizontal player. This is an absolutely killer start from Bean Soldier, getting so much advantage just immediately. It's so, it's so interesting here, too, because I think the option to not go for back row maybe signals that the hand is really strong in Elestral, some of the key cards and key players inside of Thunder, which I can very much respect, but also maybe take it just a little bit slow, maybe to bait out interaction. But Jolden's going to come down here from Tarvidi, going to search out a Stadium Rune, unless Josh says no, which I think is a pretty decent idea here. You know, with Earth potentially electing to play Foley Forest here to out this one Olympus, you don't want to play Stadium Wars here and elect for a second one down. An earthquake, though, coming down from Tarvidi, likely to take out this attack this from Viscerous. Which is interesting, though, because the defense position one is sticking around, not going anywhere, as that Jolton cannot swing over it because it was Gorgon's gaze this turn. Now, Tarvidi going for race to the top, top here, which will take out here. that second Viscerous, putting Bean Soldier on nothing on board, but many cards in hand. Tarvidi one set and what looks like two cards in hand for their name. Backed up by a counter rune here too. That, you know, we were saying about the confidence in the hand to start. It looks like an Eddie dropping down from Bean Soldier here to turn that Jolton to defense. Met with a poison tipped arrow, not going to be able to swing over this Jolton, even if that Mount Olympus gets clear. This is this is a very solid start here from both of these players just playing very low to the ground. And Bean Soldier going to use an earthquake of their own to take out this Jolton and clear the way for Eddie to start swinging directly punching in for one damage, and then Tarvidi will have to expend an additional spirit here to pop the Eddy in Bean Soldier's end phase. And once again, both of these casters have nothing on board. It equal spirits here for the most part. We're going to see a a Quackle come down quackle. To, to to heal some some spirits back. I think if you're Tarvidi there, you love to take that immediate tempo loss to heal back on spirits to be up on Bean Soldier there, back to buy a counter rune. This is pretty powerful. What I like about Quackle in this position too is that if not cleared, it can also be a big threat on that race to the top level. A four defense under Olympus is no slouch. So even a tsunami here could be pretty nice. So having to clear that back row is going to be pretty clear here. But four is not good enough. We have a big body and a six from Moss Station. Love the crab coming down. That's a, a massive pickup here from Bean Soldier. Going to be to clear over this Quackle, and then it swaps to defense position. However, uh, that won't be too big of... Oh, actually, no, that was a Water Moss Station. It's not swapping to defense position. It's clearing over Quackle and staying in attack position. And Tarvini expects spent to, draw. to draw! This is an incredible wow. opportunity here for Bean Soldier to really take a tempo push here and potentially set up for some really big plays. And there's lots of options here for Bean Soldier to really take advantage of this open board state, but he's going to expend to draw, actually. Wow. Okay, wow. so here, here's the crazy part. I was about to say, here's what's dangerous. So Tarvi going ahead and electing to expend to draw here, knowing the Moss Station can't flip to defense and only swinging for one here. You take a little bit of the chip damage, hoping that Josh plays into the Arcolith, but very yeah. smartly, Bean Soldier is not playing into potentially a card that would be able to him to, lo to lose, you know, the one back row is nothing crazy. And a boom back boom coming back. down from Tarvidi, uh, electing for all the removal into the strategy and disenchant to try and blow up this Moss Station. I think you're very much okay with that trade, resetting the board and the spirit differential is not big enough to be insurmountable for Bean Soldier TV here. Um, this is still anyone's game. I think that if you're, you're Bean Soldier here, you're feeling very, very good despite being down three spirits because 
Tarviti only has one set rune here that likely would have been used on some of these threatening Elestrals that are on board right now, unless Tarviti's really just gripping that for an Equilinx. And it looks like Tarviti's going to be expecting to draw yet again. Wow. They continue to lower that gap of spirit advantage between these two players, but giving Bean Soldier the opportunity to really take advantage of this while Tarviti going for an Ambrosia here to regain some of that spirit advantage continuing to stay up on Bean Soldier despite being down on board advantage. That's only a counter run or two away. And you're gonna go for an Equilinx here. Equilinx this is, is an big. opportunity for Bean Soldier to really put on the screws on Tarviti. Going for a Nexus here to prevent Arcolith from hitting the board by outing his own Mudlet and pop what looks like a shield of Achilles in there. <laughs> it's never, it never resolving. Resolves. You know, I like to think on that, on that back row that's next to the, the main deck there, that the Magnet is too strong to lift. That card is stuck to the fridge now, <laughs> and it's it's just going to be sitting there. It very well could be a Zeus because Tarvidi has not been able to really see any Elestrals that are meaningful for attacking, and it looks this like Quackle is activating here. This might be an opportunity for Bean Soldier to actually go for a Gorgon's Gaze if he so desired. I'm going to let that pass here, and he's going to heal back for three. And, oh, the magnet was been lifted. It was a Zeus. And it is a Zeus. Oh, look at that. It looks like Zeus is going to come down the big, strong arms, maybe looking to to bring this game back into Tarviti's favor. But again, that's going to be very hard, considering that enemies back row are effectively still alive for being soldier. One shield of Achilles, I think, will do it here. And Tsunami is going to come down. Tsunami's pretty good. Cool. Now, Quackle will have a very solid stat line here with that Mount Olympus up. But if Bean Soldier has a Nexus bank for this Equilinx, he'll be able to pop the Mount Olympus and easily clear over this Quackle. And it looks like a Thunder Elestral is hitting the board. A Thunder Moss Station. Thunder Moss. I like the play here, effectively being just enough to where you don't have to have a Demir or a Flowing Forest, and you can utilize your opponent's stadium room against them. And even Nexus to get even a bigger it's a boost. Seven. It's That's a, a seven, seven. Two now. Incredible. Oh, oh wow. Incredible play from Bean Soldier TV. Potentially also still playing around future Mount Olympuses, Olympi, if you will. And <laughs> putting this duck into the oven and doing a little bit of spirit damage on top of this. Yeah. It looks like we're starting to see the tides turn and that crab will get put to defense, naturally playing around Arcolith, that you you the great card in the matchup. <sighs> Uh, Bean Soldier gestures at Moss Station here, potentially Tarviti confused as to why the position changed. And, it's uh, properly enchanted. That's it's the properly crazy enchanted part. here, and so Arcolith not to come down, potentially Tarviti a little annoyed, expecting to be able to finally drop <laughs> this Arcolith that's definitely been rotting in the hand the entire game. But Ambrosia going to be critical here, and then a boom another bat. boom bat going to hit the board here. A second Question. boom bat. Do you, do you take the swing on the Moss Station? I don't think that's really super safe with those two back row. Or do you try to contest maybe this Equilinx? Kind of wreak havoc on your board regardless. Looks like they're maybe going to go for the ladder. Yeah. And and another <laughs> Mount Olympus. <laughs> Knew that was coming down. Very difficult position to be in. And only one card in Tarvidi's hand. And wow. Ultra of Star is going to be massive here to Nexus off of the Moss Station over to the Equilinx and swapping this Boombat to defense position, which means that next turn, Josh will be able to Equilinx Nexus back to Moss the same thing he did last turn and pop this this root and, and then still have Moss swap back to defense position, playing around Arcolith. <laughs> and he's gonna declare the effect first thing here. I think playing around uh, Arcolith is one of Earth's bread and butters here into this matchup. You know, we talk about a lot of what these casters have to do to really play super safe, I think, into a lot of these these matchups. And while Josh is pretty low on spirits, well, never mind, looks like that Ambrosia's gonna come out and make it a <laughs> little bit better for him. Have everything, why don't you? Uh, Moss Station at will, just for some extra play. Uh, kind of showcases the, the technical play here from the Soldier TV. And this spirit differential, by the way, is still just so close that uh, one draw from Octarbiti can change the entire tide here. Bean Soldier did not use his normal action that turn. He didn't re-enchant anything. He didn't expend a draw, I believe. He just went ahead and and swung because he doesn't need to put himself down in advantage if he doesn't need to. It looks like Tarviti going to go ahead and cast out attack position Ast Rabbit here, threatening this Moss Station in defense. If we see a second Altar of Stars from Bean Soldier, this will be devastating to Tarviti. Is that back row live? Is that a Demeter Bluff set? Or is that going to be a live card as Tarviti sees another Ambrosia important here to stay healthy, going to go up to what looks like five spirits in spirit deck. 
to Josh's five cards in Spirit deck. The players are on even footing here, although Bean Soldier does have three spirits on the board to his name, while Traviti just has this attack position rabbit. The question is, will this back row be live after the, while this Ass Rabbit swinging into <laughs> the very threatening Moss Station, and it's a tsunami. And it will be. Devastating moment here. The crazy part is here too, right? So uh, let's say that Ash Rabbit does connect into the Moss Station here. Tarvidi cannot set back row. Let's say the last card in hand here isn't this Arcolith of Eden to be, and it might be back row. The Echo Link's gonna make quick work of it. Bean Soldier absolutely weighing his options here for how on earth he wants to play through this. And it looks like he he's just going to be going right to the battle phase, not playing anything, not saying anything, swinging over the Astro, but swinging, swinging for one damage direct, and then that Moss Station to go right back to defense position. Four Spirits in Spirit deck, look like four cards in hand. Nothing set this time around though. Tarviti, now two cards in hand. Is it a live Elestral that they have drawn? Will it be able to put pressure onto this board meaningfully? Looks like that's a, it's a Lava Lift. Lift. Wow. Whoa, what a card. That, that is critical for coming back into this game and, and going to be able to take out the Echo Links into one spirit damage, making it just a little bit closer. Again, this Moss Station can trade here and it has the two spirits where Josh isn't going to take anything. Maybe potentially if it Lushal's in the hand, Tervidi takes one. There's definitely an argument for just going right for another Elestial here and crashing. You know, there's no backer to walk into. You could maybe re-enchant Moss Station with an Earth, make sure it guaranteed swings over and it would deal one damage. That might be the move here. Looks like Bean Soldier is going to be casting out a, another Elestral here, and it's a Mudlet. Mudlet means that Moss Station will not die here in this interaction. Moss Station's clearing over this Lava Lith. An absolute incredible game from wow. Bean Soldier here as he brings his opponent down to one spirit left in spirit deck with three spirits on his own board and a set back row. Let's see what Tarvidi decides to go out with. It's going to be an Elechik, I, you know, potentially getting back into this game with uh, potential search question mark. Not really much you can do on the zero spirits, but at least you can put up a little bit of fighting force. Josh saying that's very much okay. Bean Soldier TV in the driver's seat still. You go re enchant the mudlet, swing over this to tiny defense mission booty, but you don't even have to do that if you have an Ella chick. <laughs> Proper enchant. Go for the effect of search. <laughs> go for the effect you, you just don't, up in the need, deck. Oh <laughs> my, you know, I think I can respect it. In the random chance that there's a, a counter in that comes out of the, the fridge here and this magnets itself to the board. I think that, that that's probably a smart play to search that. You know, get a little bit of deck. Yeah, you gotta next, make sure you spin turn. the deck out. Yeah, there you go. Swing one for game. That's gonna go into a game right. two. Maybe he's gonna go ahead and go and start off for game two here with a Astra. A pretty good start, I would say, for uh, Thunder. I guess I had two cards to the fridge and those are gonna magnet down and pass over to Josh. Bean Soldier's gonna draw for turn and I don't think we're gonna see an expend to draw. See that Elchick drop down, get an early Demeter. Organ's Gaze here would be great. Uh, good to go though for grabbing that full art demeter. This could be a, a, a very critical point in the game already. Turn one, where Bean Soldier might be able to take a massive amount of advantage uh, by eating over this Ast Rabbit, preventing Tarvidi from gaining any more card advantage in hand. Uh, gonna go ahead and enchant three Earth Spirits to this Demeter here, putting himself down to 16, buffing the Elechik. Will there be any set runes here from Bean Soldier? Looks like there will be two and Going to go ahead and swing right into this Astro Rabbit, forcing Tarvidi to Shield of Achilles. And like I said, if you're being Soldier, you feel incredible about this. You do not care about this going back to your hand. Your opponent just burned themselves for two. And while your board is now open, you get to search out that second Demeter if it's not already in hand. And you get to get this card later anyway. Ooh, I like this play coming down from Tarvidi. So the Toxian here is a good position that it puts Josh on a little bit of less, uh, a little bit more timer. Right, because now you get to address the Toxion and this Rabbit. This deck can definitely do, given that certain removal or potentially an Earthquake coming down. And the Equilinx is not as viable, I would say. You know, you can pick apart the back row just a little bit here with set. Do like this position, Toxion here. There's the Equilinx right there, kind of trying to secure the back row here and lock down and make sure Torpedo can't set additional back row. Yeah, and the Nexus from Equilinx to, from Demeter to Equilinx, gonna then pop the Shield of Achilles that never resolves. The question is, Will Bean Soldier activate Demeter here to have this Echolynx hit over the Toxion? It looks like he will be going for that, making this Echolynx an absolutely large Elestral at 7-6 here. And that'll be one damage and the Toxion sent to the Underworld. Not a lot's going to play well into this. Going to go for a re-enchant or an Ascend into an Arcolith, wow. saying, I'm not going to hold on to this forever. We're going to go ahead and fire it off here. 
You have the Gorgons, you have the Gorgons. PTA is also acceptable. And it made Gorgon's gaze. We'll hit it. Turning that Unk to stone and freezing it for just one turn. Now, it's again, it's a big body that one other Demeter, or potentially a Fully Forest, can help out here. We saw great utilization of the Moss Station last game for Bean Soldier, and I think that, if I had to guess, might be seeing Moss Station come down again, and potentially some Nexus shenanigans in there. But instead, it's an Elchick. There's that Elchick that was returned to hand to get the Demeter to uh, help combat this 6-4 this Lith. Add that to the bingo card. And now, this this Arclith is going away. He can swing for two damage. D Demeter buffs El uh, the Elichik up to seven, swinging over uh, over the Arclith, and two damage in from El uh, Equilinx, and all of a sudden, Tarviti is at a massive disadvantage, not only in uh, on board, but that Spirit Differential is gonna get a lot closer. Interesting play here from, from Bean Soldier to re-enchant the Demeter. And I can only imagine that's because that set backer there is an altar of stars, allowing you to still have an extra pump of Demeter on the following turn after this altar of stars goes through, instead of opting to take the extra spirit damage. So I, I do agree. I think the extra spirit damage here effectively would have been a game of pace. You know, effectively Josh is putting a Tarvidi on on that game. But Resting Your Lord is going to come down, going to take out the Equilings. Maybe should have just <laughs> left those two spirits onto there, make it bulletproof. Yeah. But Echolink's having two spirits under it is such an important thing a lot of the time. And the Lava Lith! Lith! That earthquake. is devastating. Just show me Earthquake. You know, that's, I want to see the whole limited list come down here on this one. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, bingo card, by the way, too. On this one well. <laughs> limited Lava Lith coming card. in to target, I believe target Demeter, it was. Um, going to be a mouth of Gorgon's Gaze regardless. I think that's a much needed value from Bean Soldier here. Set one, now that the Echolink's is gone, and pass back. The, the interesting thing here... Oh, might be an eddy that comes out. Oh, a water elephant. Water chick. Very interesting. Playing around a potential tsunami from Tarviti, this Demeter will get the Elichick up to a seven, which can hit over the, the Lava Lith here. Uh, this back row has to be Shield of Achilles. That's it. That's the only way that this uh, this Lava Lith survives. And it looks like it will not be as the Elichick swings for one direct here. Showcase off for a Quackle here in defense, signaling there's probably no Zeus or Mount Olympus to save this little duck. Bird on bird violence that we're about to see coming down from Bean Soldier TV. I love the play of the water chick here. A lot of really early stuff in the game was using Elichick's big four stat body as a generic beater. So really big fan of that play from Josh to, to really oh. to really single that down. Viserys come down to the board. That's a huge play and a, a PTA. I feel like it's a desperation PTA. This this versus is going to hit hard. And while uh, eruption, please double eruption. This 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 man for game. That's an ambrosia. <laughs> no, 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 no eruptions. No eruption. Just pull it out. The, the, the fridge has to have some eruptions there somewhere. This well, ambrosia is going to help get a little back on from Soldier TV. Yeah, it looks to me like Josh may be making this decision here to go for the ambrosia specifically because, in case that Arcolith is in hand, this would be game on board because of how Bean Soldier has been playing into Arcolith with these attack position celestials. So likely would like to you know make sure that it you know, not losing to that on the spot uh and so they are going to go ahead and, and you know heal up and then get this viscerous out of deck and swing for initial two damage you put Absolutely. tarviti down three on the turn four on the turn with the cast of pta and that's going to be pretty brutal tarviti is up in spirits by at least two counter rooms. nine spirits to five spirits is quite a bit so it, there still could be cards that help to really come back here, and it looks like we're going to see drop down an Elichick, and that's going to potentially be searching out a Zeus here, unless there's a, a Shield of Achilles coming down that's going to help thwart this, this aggressive effort, or potentially Gorgon's Gaze, saved for the final moments. And even if that was an Arclith dropping down from hand, I, I, I do think you're right that, that Arclith, Josh could even just take those spirit damages and potentially try to swing back on the next turn. Gonna go for a Mount Olympus to buff this chick, and are we gonna see a race to the top come down? I think we are. Looks like a thunderstorm potential. No, it's the Zeus. Oh, Zeus yeah, for double we just enchant. Searched that out. That's right. What are we doing? Not paying attention on our <laughs> side. You know, listen. The fridge is is cold, and, and the cards are magnetized down for a reason. You can see them but also, so. the ground is squishy. Apparently, that, I don't understand what, what I'm looking at here. <laughs> it's a it's a soft fridge technology. It's, oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, I the, hadn't thought uh, about you that. You never heard of that? That's a, a new no, innovation. I've never heard of that before. That, that I've been seeing here activation after that Elchick goes down and a Another second ambrosia. ambrosia he just Both always has it it's funny seeing that you know, josh flashing the hand a little bit i saw one of the ambrosias really early on i'm curious if that was one that was drawn 
eventually or if there was just two Ambro just sitting there at all times? The entire time, yeah. And I wouldn't it's, put it's, it past him. It's hard to tell. You know, we really need to get magnets for Josh. I'll, I'll say that. Just put him onto the, <laughs> onto the board. Stop showing us your hand if you can. You want to be surprised at least once. Butler's going to come I, down I, here. Excellent card for Josh here. And that's that might just that's be incredible. It. That, that is. I, it. This might be this. This very well could be the end of the game here. Tarviti would have to be seeing exactly Arcalith. And and even then, actually, Tarviti's going to potentially one spirit left in spirit deck after this. So no, Arcalith doesn't do it. This might be game now. I don't know if there's a single Elestral in the game that does it. And if this draw is Ambrosia, there's no Elestrals to be cast. You're taking four damage next turn. I think this might be game. I, th I think this is game, set, and potentially match. Trevi's going to drop the last card here. One spirit left. Consider the options and show Astro Rabbit for game. And yeah. that's, again, that's kind of how the Cracker Tuka crumbles. That is Bean Soldier on Earth and Tarviti ending the run inside of top eight. An amazing showing.